Hello and welcome to Hot and Heavy, the Elaine Bennis podcast. I'm your host, Shivani Desai. Today I'll be talking about Season 7, Episode 6, The Soup Nazi. Hello everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. I'm doing all right, just trucking along, living life. Um, I'm all better from my illness, but then my husband got it, so I had to deal with that for a few days, hoping the kids won't get it, but you know how that goes. It usually makes its way through the house, so (laughs) my kids have fall break starting tomorrow, so um, I'm just hoping they don't spend it sick. So send me some healthy vibes. I would appreciate it. (laughs) Um, Some other kind of Seinfeld-related late-breaking news this week. Jerry Seinfeld, during one of his stand-up sets, I think he was maybe doing a QA, and a revealed that he and Larry David are working on a Seinfeld reboot? What? (laughs) I'm, I have to say, I'm pretty shocked. I don't, I, gosh, I have such complicated feelings because I don't think everything needs to be rebooted. Like, did Punky Brewster need to be rebooted? Did Save by the Bell need to be rebooted? I think the lack of audience kind of answers that question. Um, and don't get me wrong, some of the shows that they're bringing back are really fun, but also I just don't think they have the staying power. Anyway, that's all to say that I've always sort of, I don't know, I guess I've always sort of respected the fact that Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David throughout all of these years since the show ended, they've been really firm on uh, the, no, we're not doing a reunion. We're not rebooting the show. Like they're, they've been so like just firm on that, you know? And so <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of like, gosh, never say never, but I have mixed feelings. I mean, look, I, I I have faith. I mean, Larry David, if you watch Curb Your Enthusiasm, I mean, that show has not dropped off in brilliance one bit since it, it since it started. I mean, in fact, I think it just keeps getting better. And so with he and Jerry together, I mean, the original creators of the show, obviously, if they're steering this ship, I have to have faith in it, you know. I I I don't know. <laughs> I have mixed emotions, but I think I'm going to I think I'm going to err on the side of just having faith in what they can produce. And um yeah, it's kind of a healthy healthy dose of skepticism and and excitement, but I'll keep on this and hopefully <laughs> maybe I'll do a special episode about the reboot whenever it does come out. Who knows when that'll be? I'm definitely going to keep up on this story because it's fascinating to me. Like I said, I just thought of all the people in Hollywood who could be swayed to do a reboot or reunion, I would have never put my money on Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David. I just I would always think those two, (laughs) they sort of never conform to what everyone else is doing. And they certainly don't need the fucking money. I mean, come on. (laughs) These guys have more money than they know what to do with. So I don't know. It it just, it really surprised me. It excited me. I'm skeptical. There's a whole mix of emotions, kind of like a big pot of soup, if you will. (laughs) Okay, good. If there's any kind of segue, that's a segue. Uh, So why don't we get into this episode? The synopsis for The Soup Nazi is as follows. A very strict soup owner nicknamed The Soup Nazi bans Elaine from eating any of his soups for over a year. George is bothered by Jerry's public displays of affection with his new girlfriend. Two tough gay men steal an antique armoire from Kramer while he was supposed to be guarding it for Elaine. This episode was written by Spike Ferriston. All right, we start out in Jerry's apartment. Jerry and his girlfriend are kind of all hugged up on each other, very affectionate. George is looking at the paper, asking them which theater they want to see a movie in later. And they get all schmoopy, schmoopy, asking each other, which theater do you want to go to? You're schmoopy. No, you're schmoopy. George is definitely annoyed by this. He's like, come on, schmoopies, <laughs> make a decision. So Jerry makes a choice on which theater. And he asks his girlfriend, Sheila, if uh, she can join them at the soup place for lunch. She says, no, you guys have a good time, but I'll be back later for the movie. Elaine enters and Sheila has to go. She says a schmoopy goodbye to Jerry. <laughs> Elaine and George just exchange a look. 
Elaine says, man, she's really in the mood for a cheeseburger. And Jerry's like, no, 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 no. We got to go to the soup place. What soup place? So Jerry describes this soup stand that Kramer's been going to and raving about. And finally, he got a chance to taste the soup. And it was stunning. <laughs> Elaine can't believe it. Stunned by soup? He's like, you can't eat this soup standing up your knees buckle. But he does warn them there's a caveat. The guy who runs the place is pretty temperamental. If you don't follow the rules, Elaine's like, well, what? What happens? Well, he yells at you and you don't get your soup. What? So he's like, look, you'll be fine as long as you follow the procedure. <laughs> and George is like, yeah, let's go over that again. So as they're walking out, Jerry's explaining. And Elaine's like, what is happening? The actress in this scene who plays Sheila, Jerry's girlfriend, is Alexandra Wentworth. She was one of the original cast members of In Living Color, a sketch show that was on Fox. She has appeared in Jerry Maguire and Office Space. I'm, I'm very neutral on her. I watched her on In Living Color. I loved In Living Color. And I've seen her in many things that she has appeared in, including this episode, obviously. And... I hate to say it. She's always very average to me. It's not like she's a bad actress, but there's just no exceptional quality. She did an episode of Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee with Jerry Seinfeld, and she was so boring. I mean, I watched that show since it was on Crackle. Yeah, <laughs> the thriving <laughs> streaming service Crackle. And I would just watch whatever came out. Like, I didn't care who was the guest. And I remember knowing that she was going to be the next guest one week. And I thought, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. Maybe maybe she'll prove me wrong. Maybe there's something really interesting about her. <laughs> well, no. Um, she was very boring in that episode. And really, the whole episode was her just trying to explain what a wasp was and how she was a wasp. And she comes from a long generation of wasps. So if you don't know what a wasp is, it is a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. And she did a very bad job explaining it. And it's basically, from what I can gather, she's a privileged white lady who grew up in a very wealthy part of Manhattan. So anyway, to me, she's just sort of meh. Uh, my take on this opening scene, I think it's a great opening scene. We see right away the dynamic between Jerry and Sheila and how George feels about it. I mean, within the first 10 seconds, we see <laughs> just all of these emotions with all of them. It's great. This scene does a really good job introducing and explaining the soup Nazi plot. I love the conversation between Elaine and Jerry, like stunned by soup. I just love that Elaine from the get go is so doubtful about how intense this guy is. She's just like, what? Come on, you know, and I think that's very, very Elaine. Now, I talk a lot about on this podcast whether certain storylines or behaviors track with these characters. And I think this schmoopy plot is an example of a storyline that really doesn't track with Jerry's character. The PDA, you know, again, the, the sort of schmoopy schmoopy talk. But that all being said, I think because it gets called out by George and Elaine, well, more so George, but we see that Elaine agrees with George, like, they're sort of in disbelief. Like, doesn't he know what this is? Like, wh why it's such a turnoff? Like, I like that. And so for me, it helps me accept it more because it is not at all Jerry at all, <laughs> like, to do this, I think. I think there are episodes, you know, um, when George is talking about Oh, it's that episode where George is talking about how he wants to break up with that girl, the way she talks to inanimate objects like, ew, Mr. Mr. Mashed Potatoes, you are so yummy. It's like, Jerry's like, oh, my God, that's terrible. I mean, this isn't that far off from that. So anyway, I do accept it, even though this totally doesn't track with Jerry because of the fact that even George and Elaine are like, what the heck is he doing? Like, this is so not like him. So I think once it gets called out in the actual episode by other characters, it's easier to accept. I mean, I accept it more than him wanting to eat manly meat for stupid cousin Holly. So this whole scene feels very natural. All the explaining of the details about the soup Nazi, that's very necessary. I also love the opposite reactions between Elaine and George. Like I said, Elaine's just like really flippant about it. But George is very focused. Like, I, I want to go over the rules again. 
All right. So next, uh, we're on the street. And speaking of going over the rules, Jerry is explicitly explaining what to do. You know, don't ask for any extras, no small talk. And George is taking it really seriously. And Elaine is just not. She's like, oh, I'm really scared. And, and even Jerry's like, Elaine, come on. She's like, that's enough about the soup Nazi. Whoa. Then she gets distracted. She sees an antique armoire. And the guys are so confused. It's French. Um, well. So the guy who's selling it says uh, he was asking 250 but you got a nice face. So two even. So she gets so excited. She tells the guys to go ahead without her. Well, what about the soup? I'm getting an armoire, Cherry. Pardon. So my take on this scene, uh, you know, continuation of Elaine and George's opposite attitudes about their visit to the soup Nazi. I love the, ooh, I'm really scared. (laughs) The armor portion of the scene is just to introduce the plot. So it's not super funny. But we do learn about Elaine that she puts furniture above stunning soup. All right. So next we're at the soup place. George and Jerry are in line. They spot Banya and he even tries to cut in line and Jerry stops it and says, if he catches us, he will never let us come here again. OK, fine, fine. I do love this, by the way, um, because obviously Banya's original storyline <laughs> revolved around soup. <laughs> so this is just perfect to bring him back here. So it's finally their turn. George orders a medium turkey chili. Jerry orders a medium crab bisque. But George, once he gets his bag, he notices he didn't get any bread. Jerry tells him, forget it, just let it go. But then he asks the soup Nazi for bread. You want bread? Two dollars extra. But everyone in front of me got free bread. Then all of a sudden it's three dollars. What? No soup for you. So the cashier just snatches the bag back from George and gives him his money back. Next, we are on Elaine's stoop. Elaine is talking to the building manager, Tom. Apparently, there's no moving on Sunday. And she didn't know that rule. Come on, I got a nice face. She tries to charm him. (laughs) And he's like, look, tomorrow, and I'll even help you bring it in. She tells the guy that she needs to hold it. And he's like, I'm a guy on the sidewalk. I don't have layaway. Oh, please don't go. Please don't walk away. My take on this scene, it's, you know, not a lot of comedy, but we just see the plot develop with the armor. But I do like that Elaine (laughs) tries to use her face. (laughs) She's like, hey, this guy gave me a discount for my face. Maybe this guy will um, (laughs) break this rule for me. (laughs) Oh, Elaine. Hey, it was worth a try. I don't blame her. All right, next we are in Jerry's apartment. Jerry is devouring the soup. Oh my gosh, he can't believe it. It's so good. George is snacking on a box of pretzels, so irritated. Why can't we share? (laughs) And Jerry's like, I told you not to say anything. You can't expect me to share with you after you've brazenly break the rules. He's just going nuts. And George is like, do you hear yourself? And Jerry apologizes. This is what comes from living under a Nazi regime. Well, George wants to try again. Sheila enters as he's about to leave. And there's a very schmoopy greeting. (laughs) George is like, I'm going. So Jerry's like, oh, we'll meet you at the movies. George kind of looks at them, takes them in and is like, you know what? I don't feel like it. Just like that. Just like that. And George exits. Sheila's like, he's a weird guy. Kramer bursts in. He doesn't say a word. He just takes Jerry's couch cushion and is about to leave. And Jerry's like, wait a second. Why are you taking that? And Kramer explains he's going to guard the armoire for Elaine because she can't move it in until tomorrow. Well, then take your own couch cushion. Yeah, but this one's so nice and thick. Next, we're on Elaine's stoop. Kramer arrives and Elaine is so excited, really thanks him for doing this. Kramer's like, well, you asked for it and you got it. And she asks, do you need anything? Well, a hot bowl of mulligatani would hit the spot. Elaine doesn't know what he's talking about. It's an Indian soup, simmered to perfection by one of the great soup artisans in the modern era. Oh, you mean the soup Nazi? Kramer's like, oh, no, 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 he's not a Nazi. He's just a little eccentric. Most geniuses are. So Elaine heads off to get his soup, and Kramer's like, wait a second, you don't even know how to order. Now I got it. Elaine, now I got it. I got it, she says. My take on this scene... I love the little affectionate moment between these two. I don't know why I'm so sappy about this show sometimes. (laughs) In my old age, I just love when there's these little moments of them really appreciating each other. And that is very much this scene. And sort of continuing on this whole does this track with the character, I think this is so on brand with Kramer to do this for Elaine. Of all of the dudes, 
I think he is definitely the most protective of Elaine, if that makes sense. Even though Jerry dated her, <laughs> he would never do this for her. He would never sit on the stoop for her. So um, I, I just love that Kramer would do this. And I totally believe he would. And again, I just love how Elaine is continuing to be so casual about the soup Nazi etiquette. All right, next, we're back at the soup stand and George is waiting in line. We see him practicing the ordering technique. Elaine approaches and she's kind of surprised to see him. Didn't you already get soup? I didn't get it. Why? What happened? She's already smiling. I made a mistake. And Elaine laughs and laughs. And George is like, OK, we'll see how you do. Elaine's confident. She's quite certain she'll be walking out of there with a bowl of soup. And then George brings up Jerry and Sheila, all the schmoopy stuff. And oh, Elaine couldn't agree more. She hates it, too. And she thinks they should say something. And George absolutely agrees. You know, he's so weird. We still haven't figured him out. And then George shushes her. He's like, look, I'm shifting into soup mode. <laughs> oh, God, she says. George orders a large crab bisque perfectly and gets his bread. Beautiful, he says. You're pushing your luck, little man. Just want to note here how he got a taste of the crab bisque and then he changed his order from the turkey chili. I just thought that was a nice touch. Uh, so Elaine approaches, <laughs> bangs on the counter with both hands. Oh, 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 she orders a mulligatani for Kramer. And then she's looking at the soups. What is that, lima bean? Ugh, never been a fan. <clears throat> and she really looks at the soup Nazi and says, you know what? Has anyone ever told you you look exactly like Al Pacino? And he just kind of stares at her. You know, son of a woman. Hua! Hua! Very good. Very good. <laughs> you know what? No soup for you. Come back. One year. Uh, my take on this scene. Uh, it's a great scene. First of all, we have Elaine and George together, which is awesome. And they are on the same team against Jerry's behavior. I can't decide if I like combative Elaine and George towards each other or Elaine and George same team. It might be just equal because I love when they're getting along too. I mean, I guess the scene has both because they're on the same team when it comes to Jerry and Schmoopy. But also, I love how Elaine is so amused that George made a mistake the first time. And she's like openly laughing at him, which I love as well. <laughs> but he's not even that offended. He's just like, okay, okay, <laughs> we'll see how good you do. Elaine's denial about how bad the soup Nazi is, I just can't get over. I just, that's part of what I love about Elaine, her confidence. You know, she has no, she really doesn't think she has anything to worry about, even though she's been warned by Jerry and Kramer. And now she's standing with George, who did get kicked out without soup. So, but she's still like, yeah, I'm walking out of there with a bowl of soup. And I just want to acknowledge this delicious moment, this this delicious friend moment that George and Elaine have. I know I've had these. I'm sure many of you have had these moments where it's like you and a friend discover that you are totally on the same page with an issue about another friend. And it's just like, oh my God, like it is such a fun slash satisfying moment when you're like, oh my God, why are they doing this? Oh my God, did you hear about this? You know, it's gossipy, whatever, <laughs> probably not being great friends. But like, these are the moments of friendship that I just absolutely love. And so I love witnessing George and Elaine having this together. And they're on the same team. She even kind of just like leans into him and grabs his arm like, I know. <laughs> it's so great. And then finally, Elaine's interaction with a soup Nazi. It's I mean, it's so iconic. Such a fantastic performance by JLD when she's just so like, whatever, I'm just going to look around, bang on this counter. And then that shocked look when she gets yelled at is so great. She's just like, wait a second. <laughs> like, this came out of nowhere. It's like, mm, Elaine, you've been warned about this. All right, next we're on Elaine's stoop. A couple of men are walking and they spot the armoire and they immediately fall in love with it, like head over heels, just like Elaine did. And they start to pick it up when Kramer tells him, hey, you can't take this. This belongs to a friend of mine. Well, these guys don't care. One of them gets in Kramer's face and threatens him, says they're taking it and that's all there is to it. So Kramer backs off and they lift the armoire and they take it away. Right next, we're back on the street. Elaine and George are walking. George is just slurping up his soup as they walk. Elaine is, of course, going off about how awful the soup Nazi is. I mean, is he allowed to do that? That's discrimination. She's really thinking about calling the state's attorney's office. 
And George is really not even able to pay attention. He's so into this soup. He's like, Elaine, you've got to taste this. Well, she takes the taste and her knees do buckle. She's got to sit down. My take on this scene, I love that George can't even bother to wait. <laughs> He's like eating and walking. And if there's anything that's not easy to walk and eat, it's soup. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. He just needs to eat it. It's that good. Of course, Elaine is all fired up. I love seeing angry Elaine. And then that transition, you know, reacting to the soup. I got to sit down. Very funny. All right, next we're on Elaine's stoop. Elaine arrives to find her armoire gone. <laughs> she asks Kramer what happened. It was stolen. She's, of course, in shock. And Kramer explains there were these street toughs and it was very frightening. His life was in danger. You should have seen the way they talked to me. Kramer asks where his soup is. Well, the soup Nazi threw me out. Then we get a classic Kramer. Oh, yeah. My take on the scene. Nothing too funny here. Just needed to see that Elaine discovers that Kramer totally failed at his one job. <laughs> and I also suppose that Elaine failed at her one job as well. All right. Next, we're at the soup stand. Jerry and Sheila are hugging up on each other in line. Jerry asks what she's going to get. I don't know. I'll decide at the last minute, she says. Well, hurry up. You're on deck, sister. She starts kissing him and he tries to stop her. But then we hear the soup Nazi banging on his counter. Hey! And he does not approve of them kissing in his line. And Sheila says she can kiss wherever she wants. You just cost yourself a soup. Well, Sheila is so offended. Let's go, Jerry. And she storms out. Well, Jerry just sort of freezes in place. Sheila comes back in and looks at him. Jerry? He looks from the soup Nazi to her and makes a decision. And he says to Sheila, do I know you? All right, next we are in Jerry's apartment. And Elaine points out how Jerry chose soup over a woman. And he clarifies, it was a bisque. She tells him how George has become much more normal than him. I mean, he's engaged to be married. Your first priority is soup. Well, did you taste the soup, he asks. Elaine says, yeah, you made the right decision. And the way he figures it, it's way easier to smooth things over with Sheila than the soup Nazi. Kramer enters to return Jerry's cushion and Elaine's like, oh, there he is. He genuinely apologizes about what happened with the armoire. And Elaine's like, yeah, me too. Jerry clarifies that these thieves, they only wanted the armoire, nothing else. Yes, Kramer says, and they were quite taken with it. George buzzes. Jerry asks Elaine and Kramer if they've noticed George's attitude lately. You know, like he's better than me or something. And Elaine says she doubts that George has ever thought he's better than anyone. George enters and an awkward silence falls over the group. George can sense something is up. Are you just talking about me? What's going on? Absolutely not. <laughs> Something's going on here. George is very suspicious. Well, Kramer gets up to get some soup. And Elaine says, you know, one day that guy's going to get his. George asks Jerry how the movie was. He says, eh, we didn't go. Sheila and I are kind of on the outs. Really, George says, unable to contain his excitement. And Jerry notices this. What are you, happy? George tries to deny it, but then finally admits that, yes, he is happy. And then he tells him how he and Sheila are making him and all of his friends sick. Right, Elaine? Oh, but uh, Elaine <laughs> just snuck out of the apartment, <laughs> leaving George high and dry. And then George goes on to specify the kissing, the schmoopy. It's disgusting. Jerry's like, disgusting? And people who do that should be arrested, George says. And Jerry's even more motivated to get back with her now. And we had a pact, George says. Again with the pact? All I did was shake your hand. And George says, ah, ha. My take on this scene, I do love Elaine pointing out how George is more normal. The delivery is so wonderful. JLD does it so well. Your first priority is soup. <laughs> And then immediately flipping when Jerry points out how good the soup is. Again, these are not nice people. <laughs> so it's not surprising that uh, Elaine is sort of coming to Sheila's defense. Like you chose a soup over your girlfriend, but then was like, wait, wait a second. That soup was really good. The vibe towards Kramer when he walks in. I like that Elaine is clearly peeved, but seems to soften after his apology. And Kramer is like, he's so sorry. You can tell he feels so bad he let her down. The whole setup to the awkward George moment is great as well. I like that Jerry asks them about George's attitude because that's so believable. I think, you know, when you're the friend that's getting the attitude, you got to you got to run it past the other friends. Like, what's going on with him? And it's been pretty obvious. I mean, George hasn't been shy about how annoyed he is with the uh, schmoopy behavior. And that awkward moment is really well executed. I love the <laughs> hello. 
hello. <laughs> He's just like, what the hell? The Elaine sneaking out moment. Mwah, chef's kiss. I mean, I love that she's the one in the earlier scene who planted that seed with George, right? Like we should say something to him. And so George is 100% sure she's going to back him up. And then we hear that door slam. I mean, <laughs> and we also see her anticipate this moment and make her move. You know, she slowly gets up, just starts strolling out. <laughs> it's just fabulous. And uh, poor George, you know, this is sort of another pact that was broken. I mean, she definitely led him to believe that she was going to back him up, but she, no, she made the decision to leave George to take care of it. All right, next we're at the soup stand. Kramer is just hanging out and telling the soup Nazi about the armoire robbery. Ugh, the soup Nazi is very disgusted. Newman's in line and uh, he approaches and orders a jambalaya. He does everything perfectly. Kramer even gives him a nod. Soup Nazi tells him to continue with his story. And Kramer's just like, well, my friend is so disappointed. You know, she's very emotional. The Soup Nazi tells Kramer how you know he's been such a great friend to him. He has an extra armoire in his basement. If you want it, it's yours, he says. Kramer is so moved. How can I ever thank you? And the Soup Nazi says, you know, Kramer's the only one who understands him. And Kramer says, yes, you, you suffer for your soup. And the Soup Nazi agrees. You know, how can he tolerate anything less than perfection for his customer? And the next customer comes up and orders a gazpacho, por favor. Por favor? I'm part Spanish. Adios, muchacho! <laughs> well, apparently Spanish can get you banned. <laughs> Fun fact about this customer who asks for the gazpacho, he is the half-brother of Dennis and Randy Quaid. I thought that was interesting. His name is Buddy Quaid. All right, next we're in Monk's. Jerry is trying to smooth things over with Sheila, and he eventually wins her over, and they're back to being so schmoopy. George and Susan enter and say hello. Sheila offers for them to join, and Susan says yes. George says no. <laughs> well, okay. George points out that Jerry and Sheila are sitting on the same side of the booth. Yeah. Problem? Feel like it's a little unusual. Leave one side empty. Well, we're changing the rules, Jerry says. Susan asks what George is getting. And George wants to teach Jerry a lesson and starts getting all lovey-dovey with Susan and baby talking with her. And ooh, does she love it. <laughs> so Jerry does the same with Sheila. You want a little tuna fishy? And before you know it, they are both making out furiously at the booth. And we see the manager watching. <laughs> and he's on his way over to stop this shit. Next, we're in Elaine's apartment. Kramer has his hands over Elaine's eyes and says, voila, to reveal a gorgeous armoire in her home. She is so surprised and absolutely loves it. Did the K-Man do it or did the K-Man do it? The K-Man did it, she says. And she asks, how much did you pay for this? Yeah, how about zero? What? Where'd you get it? From the guy you so callously refer to as the soup Nazi? Get it! Out And a huge push, Kramer goes through her swinging kitchen door. She asks why he gave it to her. And he says, well, he told the soup Nazi the story about what happened and he just offered it up. And she's like, wow, well, I have to go down there and personally thank him. I had this guy all wrong. Well, he's a deer, Kramer says. Uh, my take on the scene, it's a great scene. One of the most forceful get out shoves of the series, which is amazing. But, I mean, given her shock, it's totally warranted. I don't see what else she could have done but pushed Kramer through her kitchen door. All right, next we're in Monks. George and Susan are alone now at the booth, sitting on the same side. George is asking how much tip to leave when Susan, you can tell something's on her mind. She expresses her appreciation for how open George was about showing his feelings in front of people, especially Jerry. You know, it's a big step in our relationship. George is like, huh? And she nuzzles in, because you love your little Kiki, don't you? And <laughs> George is like, oh, shit. Oh, what did I do? All right, next we're back at the soup stand. Banya successfully orders his soup, and he tells the guy behind Elaine in line that he thinks the soup Nazi's in a good mood. Elaine goes up to the soup Nazi and says how Kramer gave her the armoire. She says, it's so beautiful. I just can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And the soup Nazi goes off. He did not know it was for her. If he had known, he would have taken a hammer and smashed it into pieces. Next! Elaine is so shocked, she turns around to see the guy behind her, and he's just scared stiff. My take on this scene, Elaine 
gets choked up here. How funny is that? <laughs> I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. The aggression, so unnecessary from the soup Nazi, but obviously it makes the scenes so hilarious. Like, he just hates Elaine on sight. <laughs> Next, we're on the street. Kramer and Jerry are walking, and Kramer sees the street toughs who stole the armoire. And Jerry wants to confront them, but Kramer wants to get a cop. Ah, there are no cops around here. So Jerry says, come on, they'll leave. Let's go. The guys are window shopping and arguing if blue goes or not. I think it's flowers, like a flower shop. Kramer says, excuse me. And right away, they both respond very aggressively. Are you talking to me? Or were you talking to me? One of them says, you were obviously talking to one of us. So who? Who was you talking to? (laughs) Kramer and Jerry immediately get scared and take off running. Right next, we are in Elaine's apartment. Elaine is telling Jerry how insulted she was. I mean, he is a soup Nazi. And Jerry is checking out the armoire and he pulls some paper out of one of the drawers. And it turns out they're the soup Nazi's recipes. Oh, Elaine is so thrilled. Now she has the perfect revenge. She could give them to every restaurant in town. She could have them published. She could drop flyers from a plane above the city. Jerry tries to stop her. Look, I don't want you causing any trouble at that soup stand. Well, what do you care? She tells him to get out of her way. Elaine, let the man make his soup. Don't make me hurt you, Jerry. Uh, My take, this is really fun. (laughs) Elaine and Jerry's interaction is great. Jerry is so obsessed with his soup, (laughs) and it's amazing. And here we get to meet vengeful Elaine. I love vengeful Elaine. The overdramatic don't make me hurt you, Jerry, is also fantastic. What a a great ending to the scene. All right, next we're on the street. Susan and George are at the same window as the street toughs, and they're talking about, again, the blue flower arrangement, I think. And Susan is in her schmoopy mood, calling George her little baby bluey. And he's like, yes, I'm your baby Bluey. Jerry comes up to them and Susan tells him how much she likes Sheila. And he says, oh, that's too bad because we're, we're not seeing each other anymore. He says she was very affectionate, which I loved, but mentally. We just couldn't seem to make it work. Really, George says, all annoyed. Jerry's like, you know, you got to have that connection, which you two obviously have. And it's great to see it so open in public. <laughs> we had that. Anyway. I'll see ya. Jerry exits and George is just so pissed. Yeah, see ya. All right, next we are at the soup stand. The soup Nazi's in a terrible mood. He's yelling at this woman to get out. And even though she claims, but I didn't do anything. So she exits and we see Elaine standing there. Totally smug bug. Hello, she says. You, you think you're getting soup? The soup Nazi tells her to leave, that she's wasting everyone's time. Oh, she says. I don't need soup. I can make my own soup. She starts reading from the papers and the soup Nazi recognizes his recipes and he tries to grab them. She snatches them away and says, that's right. I got them all. Cold cucumber, corn and crab chowder, mulligatani. You're through, soup Nazi. Pack it up. No more soup for you. Next! Then there's a tag to the episode where Newman is in a panic running down the street. He sees Jerry and tells him how Elaine is causing all this trouble. She's going to drive him out of business. And now the soup Nazi is going to move to Argentina. He's giving away all the soup that's left. So he's going to go home and get a big pot. And then Jerry starts running towards the soup stand. The actress in this scene who gets thrown out, I think a lot of you will recognize, is the fantastic Anna Gasteyer. And this is actually her first television credit. This was before she was a cast member on SNL. And unlike Allie Wentworth, I have many opinions about Anna, and they are all very positive. I love her. She's so incredibly funny. If you aren't familiar with her work, just look up her SNL clips. She had some incredible characters on Saturday Night Live. I mean, just, I mean, she played Martha Stewart. She's one of the Delicious Dish NPR hosts, uh, the middle school choir teacher. I mean, just so many. It's just endless. And most recently, she starred in a show called American Auto, which takes place in Detroit, the auto industry. So cool. Uh, Anyway, I love her. And she has one line in this episode. But I love her. So I love the way she performs it. (laughs) And my take on this scene, I mean... A more classic scene you probably can't find, and it's played to perfection by JLD. I love it all, beginning to end. I mean, that little smile and hello when she's next in line, 
then waving the papers in his face, snatching them away. And that final delivery of next, it's, I mean, there's just no notes. Perfect. Perfect, JLD. All right, I'm going to take a quick break and I will see you on the other side. Manganese, copper, magnesium. Oh, <laughs> looks like I got your attention. Those are just a few of the precious benefits packed into a tiny morsel of natural goodness. I'm talking about the lima bean. From the same folks who convinced you to eat kale and tofu comes this new message about the lima bean. Eat lima beans. We swear, they're so good for you and taste great. Eventually. They are loaded with antioxidants, totally iconic when it comes to protein, shows your blood sugar who's boss, and keeps you so regular, you should really switch to a bidet if you don't already have one. They may resemble pebbles of mucus and have a texture like mucus, but trust me, once you force them down enough times, you will wonder how you ever survived without lima beans in your life. So go to your local farmer's market, health food store, or find a wild lima bean bush and start your journey with lima beans. Also, be sure to follow lima beans on social media. We recommend Lima Bean Queen, Butterface Butterbeans, and Aunt Jelima. They all have delicious esque recipes incorporating lima beans in ways that totally mask their taste and look. Lima beans. Give it time. And we're back. There were some extras I wanted to mention in this episode. In the inside look, JLD, she reveals that she had never seen Son of a Woman. So Jerry was the one who told her to do the hoo moment with the um, soup Nazi. So she was very appreciative because that she felt like that totally made the scene. And it, you know, it brought it to life. So she was like, really good tip from Jerry to do that because I was not familiar with the movie. Also, JLD came up with sneaking out of Jerry's apartment when George finally confronts Jerry about the schmoopy stuff. So apparently, I think she was supposed to stick around. They didn't really specify what was supposed to happen. But during rehearsals, JLD pitched the idea of her just <laughs> just walking out and leaving George alone. And so that's what they went with. And I love that she came up with that idea. I thought this was interesting. A lot of people on the show, from the producers, the the director, even Spike Ferriston, the writer, they thought that this episode was really weak. They were like, okay, this might be the turkey of the season, but we've already done it. Like, because <laughs> they just said it's so specific to this one New York guy. You know, the soup Nazi, for those of you who might not be aware, was an actual person. And Spike Ferriston had written this based on his experience of going to this actual soup stand, the soup Nazi guy, because when he was a writer, for David Letterman. This place was really nearby. A lot of the writers went to this place. So he was really well known in the city. So he the, the thought was like, is this too specific? Like, will people around the country even get this? But of course, once it aired and it like blew up, they were totally proven wrong. <laughs> they were like, oh, I guess it's not such a weak episode. And the actual soup Nazi was so mad, uh, hated all the attention that this episode got him. Apparently, when Jerry Seinfeld, during the summer hiatus, went to New York, and he's like, hey, I want to go to the Soup Nazi place, <laughs> Spike Ferriston's like, mm, I don't think that's a good idea because it had been in the press. I think he had done like a CNN interview about how much he just hated the attention. He hated this. And so Jerry's like, no, 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 it'll be fine. So <laughs> apparently Jerry did go. And the Soup Nazi guy went off and called him a fucking asshole and just unloaded on him, just said, you ruined my life, you ruined everything, I demand an apology. And I guess Jerry just gave him the most Jerry Seinfeld sarcastic apology. I'm sorry, he said. He kind of turned to the entire crowd in the in the store, which is sort of perfect because it's like, mm, well, also, uh, I think you cashed in on it because... <laughs> He was able to franchise and maybe not franchise, sorry, but he did uh, come out with a line of soups that are 
sold in grocery stores to this day. So pretty sure um, you made some good money off of this episode. But I think true to his character, he's never going to thank Jerry Seinfeld for that. Uh, the commentary for this episode was done by Andy Ackerman, Spike Ferriston, and Jerry Seinfeld. And Jerry said, <laughs> I just thought this was cute. Uh, the outfit that Julia Louis-Dreyfus is wearing in this episode is that leather jacket and that blue backpack. Jerry just commented, oh, man, Julia loved that combo. He, she really loved that leather jacket and that blue backpack. So I thought that was cute. And it looks good on her, so I don't blame her. Um, the shifting into soup mode, that's a line that George says. Apparently, that's what the Letterman writers would actually say when they were going to the soup stand. They're like, wait, we got to shift into soup mode. So Elaine's first scene at the soup stand where she bangs on the counter, you know, Al Pacino thing. Spike Ferriston said he saw that exact same thing happen from the banging to the Al Pacino thing, saw it all happen in front of him. And he literally just wrote it almost verbatim for Elaine. I thought that was pretty incredible. And the notes about nothing. So that scene where George, Jerry and Elaine are walking down the street on the way to the soup stand right before Elaine sees the armoire, there is a background actor who is the same guy from Elaine's bachelor auction, the Harvard graduate ladies. I just thought that was interesting because <laughs> I kind of recognized him I'm like that guy looks familiar. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld met Alexandra Wentworth, the actress who plays Sheila in the parking lot of the studio after he smashed her car window with a baseball. So apparently on their off time or when they would take breaks, they would go to this particular part of the parking lot and um, hit baseballs. And so, yeah, he hit her car window, smashed it. Of course, he took care of it. He paid for it and everything. But uh, that's how they met. In the scene where Elaine is eating that box of pretzels, the same one that we see George with earlier, she was supposed to complain about how they were inedible because they were saltless. And Jerry's response was supposed to be, yeah, I bought the baldies by mistake. I just thought that was cute. Baldies? Saltless pretzels are baldies. But I'll tell you what, the baldies would not make you thirsty. So Kramer might have benefited from that in the Woody Allen movie. Um, there was supposed to be more of Kramer defending the soup Nazi to Elaine. Some of the lines that were cut out, he's an artist. It just happens that he works in soup. With each spoonful, you are consuming part of his soul. <laughs> he really does get the soup Nazi. Uh, some deleted dialogue after Elaine goes to confront the soup Nazi. This is after she says, don't make me hurt you, Jerry. Jerry was supposed to call after her. All right, but when you're eating some watery crap from a can, don't come crying to me. He slams the door and says, I don't live here. <laughs> thought that was kind of funny. Okay, normally we would be moving on to Greg's sack lunch. But unfortunately, our most dedicated contributor, Greg, is laid up. He's got an injury, and so he's not able to do his thoughts this week. He did say he was really bummed about that because he does love this episode. So get well soon, Greg. Get well, get well soon. We wish you to get well. And maybe call Wendy for some physical therapy. I did get a couple of voice memos from my pal, Kenny, who we've heard his thoughts on this show before. So let's go ahead and play them. Have you ever noticed how much the phone rings at the soup store, even though the sign clearly says no phone orders? Also, anytime Georgette's making dinner, she'll send me that clip of Newman saying, Jambalaya! <laughs> and finally, George must have been really hungry because he changed his order to a large, and maybe that's why he got bread. Also, he changed what he ordered. He must have really wanted some of Jerry's soup. So that's why he changed his order from a turkey chili to uh, crab bisque. Okay, so I just like literally played that real time. I got that this morning. I got those uh, voice memos this morning from Kenny. Uh, <laughs> that's so funny that you point out no phone orders because, yeah, there is that sign. I think that was actually in the notes about nothing. I didn't, I didn't note that down myself. But also, not only are they taking phone orders, but it's a pay phone. They're, they're getting incoming calls on a pay phone, which I always thought was bizarre as well. Maybe they were just trying to show how busy an atmosphere that place was. But um, yeah, that's a really good catch, Kenny. I'm so glad you brought that up because, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of obvious, like maybe the set designer shouldn't have put that sign up. And yes, of course, uh, George, you know, he like by this point, it's been at least an hour, I would think, since he and Jerry were at the soup stand. He got a taste of the crab bisque. So yeah, you know he's damn hungry. And those pretzels he was eating were baldies, like I just said. So they were saltless, probably gross. Yeah, George is 
hangry, I'm sure, at this point. So upgrade to large, change it to crab bisque, because that's what he had a taste of <laughs> from Jerry's order. All makes sense. Very Back to tracking with the character, all of that tracks with George. Thank you, Kenny, for sending in those voice memos. I love hearing your thoughts. Oh, <laughs> I love Georgette. Georgette is Kenny's lovely wife. And uh, (laughs) I mean, really, can you make jambalaya without having that sound drop at the ready? Jambalaya. (laughs) It's so great. And, you know, anytime, Kenny, you want to send over some jambalaya, I am happy to sample it. Uh, Just make sure I have somewhere to sit down because I'm sure it'll make my knees buckle. Thanks again, Kenny. All right, moving on to my favorite Elaine moments. I have to say it's that end scene when she tells off the soup Nazi, vengeful Elaine. So well done. Fantastic performance by JLD. A close second. It's a short moment, but how she laughs at George after he says, I made a mistake. (laughs) It's just like she's almost laughing before he says it because she's anticipating that he fucked up the first time. I just love it. And my final notes for the episode, Elaine gets a lot. She really gets to shine in this episode. In fact, I think it's so balanced with all four of the main characters. So really well done. That's to me, that's when episodes work perfectly is when everyone has balanced out storylines and every every plot here is very, very strong. I can't complain too much since we got a lot of JLD fun, but I'd maybe swap out a little bit of the armoire stuff to get more of the interaction between Elaine and Jerry and Sheila together. I wanted to see... Elaine kind of real time witness all the schmoopiness and see what she would do about that. Uh, Maybe we see her discuss it with George, but I'd love Elaine to make some comment to Jerry as well. But as we know, she opted to walk out of the apartment (laughs) when the subject came up, which I think obviously just works so well as uh, too. But um, I don't know, just some some kind of a comment, even maybe being like, you wouldn't even hold my hand and you're what what the hell? Why are you doing this with her? (laughs) I mean, overall, this is a classic, fantastic episode for good reason. That reason being, there is plenty of Elaine. Done. I mean, that's really all it takes. Oh my God, this just in. I literally just got an email from Greg. He has rallied and sent in some thoughts. Oh, what a sweetheart. Okay, so let me open up this sack. It's here. (laughs) First are Greg's overall thoughts. He says, while I am both on a muscle relaxer for a pinched nerve in my shoulder and under the gun of working between house guests being in town, I need to provide my sack lunch for this episode because it is arguably one of the most well-known and best. I also would make the argument that this is one of Elaine's best episodes of the series. I may yell Stella randomly on these meds, but I am down. Love it, Greg. Thank you so much for doing this. Okay, so the next thing I find in Greg's sack are his favorite scenes and Elaine moments. He says, Elaine has so many great moments in this episode that I can't even rank them because each of her scenes is gold, Jerry, gold. The arc in this episode of both Elaine and George, a.k.a. Team Benestanza, bonding in their disdain for Jerry and the whole schmoopy PDA thing is a rare thing of beauty. Not only do we get a passing glance they make at each other early on, but I love the scene where they're discussing it in line at the soup Nazis. I love when these two are on the same page and together for a meaty scene, and this one delivers tenfold. I love later how George even offers Elaine some of his soup. They're the normal ones in this episode with Jerry being the odd man out. It's a rarity that I cherish. Oh my gosh, we're totally on the same page there, Greg. I think I've I've said my piece about that. But yes, when they're in cahoots, same team, especially against Jerry, it's gold. Jerry, gold. Greg goes on to say, Elaine's best scene is the final one with the soup Nazi where she reveals she has his secret recipes. Her arrogance here in retaliation for him dismissing her earlier is a perfect JLD moment that will go down in the history books of greatest sitcom performances ever. When she says, pack it up, no more soup for you. Next! You just knew that the cast and crew all cheered her on after this Emmy caliber delivery. I mean, I already said this is my favorite scene, um, favorite Elaine moment of the episode. Yeah, just so and just like so satisfying. Like we all feel like this guy's been such an asshole the whole episode. So (laughs) we're so on Elaine's side when she does all of this. And so, yeah, that just makes it that much sweeter. 
All right, next in Greg's sack is his scene swap idea. He says, I have zero notes. This episode is perfect. The only thing that probably couldn't be done in current times is the characterization of the street toughs. While I like the juxtaposition of them being both homosexual, not that there's anything wrong with that, but also bullies, I just don't know if that would fly today. Right. Um, so I didn't really get into this because there was a lot better things to talk about about this episode. When Spike Ferriston had pitched the idea of the armor getting stolen, um, Larry David was very much like, well, what thieves are only going to steal an armor? Well, but if they're gay, they probably would. So that was the thinking behind it. Uh, I don't know. I think it uh, could it fly today. Maybe. I mean, why can't why can't gay people be thieves as well? <laughs> uh, but I don't know if anyone would really try it. All right. And then Greg's extra thoughts in his sack. He says, how sweet is Kramer for willing to sleep on the street overnight for Elaine? While he is a hipster doofus, he always tries to help, especially for her. And I find that very sweet. Jerry wouldn't do that for her, nor would George. She knew exactly who to call. Oh, my gosh. We are like totally on the same page. Maybe you should always be on muscle relaxers, because it kind of makes you like say what's in my brain. <laughs> I mean, I say that like we never agree. We usually do. But um, yeah, I, I love that too. And like I said, it seems a little sappy to get like all like, oh, it's so cute. But uh, I got to I gotta call it out when it happens. Next, Greg says, Allie Wentworth is an interesting guest star here. I know to this day she is close with Jerry, and she's even done his Comedians in Cars getting coffee. I'm torn on her as I've never found her really funny in anything I've seen her in, and this character is very one note. So she doesn't add much to this episode at all. Susan, however, is hilarious in her performance when George turns into a heavy PDA guy. Oh my gosh. Yes, again, same page so neutral on Allie Wentworth, neutral slash uh, find her very uninteresting. And yeah, I agree. Susan, I love <laughs> I love Susan's performance. I guess I didn't really call that out enough. I mean, even in the coffee shop when she's really like, you can see her deep in thought like, you know, George, I really, I really appreciate you showing your feelings like that because of course he would never do that. And, you know, of course, yeah, she doesn't know that he's doing it just to uh, show Jerry how ridiculous he looks with Sheila. And she just, you kind of feel bad for her. She's like, finally, you're showing your feelings. <laughs> and yeah, you love your little Kiki, don't you? <laughs> Super funny. Bravo, Heidi Swedberg. Greg goes on to say, I'm shifting into soup mode is something I say every fall, and I absolutely love that line as much as any George line ever. Well, I hope you were delighted by the little trivia I just shared about it being an actual line that the Letterman writers would say when they were <laughs> approaching the soup stand. And lastly, Greg says... Lastly, I love the very quick appearance of Anna Gasteyer in this episode. She's an underrated improv performer, and I always forget that she's in this. Ah, same. Love her. Love, love, love her. Woo! Thank you so much, Greg. Uh, extra, extra thank you for putting in all this effort when you're not feeling well. Oh, I really, really appreciate it. And I think that's all I can say about the Soup Nazi. Please be sure to follow the podcast on social media. On Instagram, it's at Hot Heavy Elaine on TikTok at Elaine Bennis Podcast. And if you'd like to email me any thoughts, please do at elainepodcast at gmail.com. Thank you so much for listening, and I will see you next time. 